you know, when I ran Columbia Records, I mean, I signed Destiny's Child. I signed um, Alicia Keys. Discovered Alicia when she was 16. Um, Handle the Fuji. She went. She went to a, um, a performing arts school there in Hell's Kitchen, right outside of Hill, right there in the heart of Manhattan. Um, I gave her her first uh, deal, like I said, at 16 when I was president of Columbia. So she was signed first to Columbia. I left in '99. <clears throat> um, yeah, I left in. I left in. That must be somebody's page. But I left in '99, and then. Um, Later in 99, believe it or not, uh, Columbia let her leave because we had not released her. I signed her in 96, I guess. So in 99, so she was there about two and a half years and uh, just developing, letting her write and do what she does now. Um, but unfortunately, the powers to be at the time after I left didn't necessarily see it that same way. And But then she went and crossed the street, as we say, and got hooked up with Clive Davis and and ended up doing her own thing. Probably, you know, I don't know, probably five or six of the songs that was on her album when she came out, um, finally did come out, was all part of the album that we were making in 1998. And she took, the, they let her take the music and everything. And that's a real history story right there. Uh, but, you know, signing Destiny's Child and obviously Jermaine, uh, my relationship was with Columbia Records was pretty strong in the 90s because, again, I ran So So Deaf with Jermaine and we had the Brat, and we had Jagged Edge, and we had Escape, and we, you know, we were just developing a brand in So So Deaf, and <clears throat> and through doing that, uh, and then obviously I had a whole lot of relationships with other artists, and you know, and I was pretty darn good at what I did. So uh, the, the the heads of Columbia and and Sony at the time decided they wanted to bring me up, and uh, my management company at that time was based in Miami, uh, so I went and uh, kind of did my thing up in New York for about four years. The Fuji's first album was called Blunted on Reality. And um, very few people, I don't know, they sold 50,000, well, get down. So they, f they didn't sell a lot of records. And then obviously then the score was next. And um, when I went to Columbia, it was in July of 95. And they pretty much, and, and you know, I can't take credit for the record or anything they did, because they pretty much had the record done. The only thing that I can say is that I convinced them to let's wait and set the record up right. And we did that, and it was, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, October of 95, we put out a song called Fujila, which um, created that buzz, really kind of took off, and we released that album at the beginning of 96, and the rest is history. And it just, you know, went on to sell phenomenal sales, which I, I've got it somewhere around here, but, but, you know, maybe in my office back there. But um, they sold a lot of records. You know, basically, um, yeah, there were almost 20 million records worldwide. 19, I think it was 19 million. I mean, they were phenomenal, We, you know, all over the world, not just in the U.S. And the fact that Wyclef speaks French and, and you know, and, and Spanish and, his, you know, being from Haiti and his just ability to, I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing. So they became a really an international brand right away. Um, and it was, it was fun. It was fun. You know, Maxwell, I put out Maxwell, and here he comes now. He's... You know, he ain't released an album in a while, um, and, uh, and now he's out on tour and selling. And it's so crazy because I, I realized during that era um, how important, or I guess how important my existence was, and still is, I hope, but how important it was for the music industry back then because um, maybe this will be a little, maybe this is a little vain, but uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what would, where would Destiny Child, if, if I hadn't, you know what I'm saying, hadn't been there. Or, don't get me wrong, talented, Beyonce, their sisters, Matthew, or dad, they all got it going on, and they went on to do what they've had to do. But that launch is always critical. Now, it would, it would have happened eventually. Or Alicia, you know, when you really think about it, how it all transpired to be, for her to be, look at those sales right there, to realize... You know, Alicia Keys, I think the album that she's on now is her fourth album. So it ain't like, you know, you, you think about, like we were talking about Bow doing seven records, you just don't. There's a lot that goes into this. Or even Kenny Lattimore to this day, I managed him, but I launched him in 96 with Maxwell and some of these other artists. Uh, again, as he was signed to Columbia Records at that time. So, you know, it's just a lot of history, man. And, and, and uh, you know, for me, I've, I've actually been a part of the fabric. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting in a big way, probably much more than most people really realize.